The common theme of their experiments were observing and manipulating the properties of the subatomic particle called the electron. Utilizing the charge of the, these electrons in a meaningful way is what allows electronic circuits to function. The amount of energy it takes to move this charge from point to point is called voltage. The technical definition of voltage is the difference, the difference of electrical potential between two points of an electrical circuit. The units are called volts or joules per coulomb. An example of this is if you have a point A and a point B, to find the voltage VAB across this would be VA minus VB. There are two ways to represent a DC voltage source, and they're both illustrated below. The current will then flow from the positive to the negative terminals. The most important takeaways um, from voltage is that there is no absolute number or quantifiable value for voltage. It is always measured, this is a, um, always a measured value taken between two reference points. As we just said, I gave an example to um, the 9 volt battery is 9 volts from the negative, from the positive to the negative terminals. When this 9 volt battery is then connected to a circuit, it then has the potential to push electric charge from one position to the, another, or in other words, current will flow. To make things a little bit easier for us, we denote a universal reference point at which each circuit element will be connected back to. This point is called ground. It is common in circuit analysis to define this point as zero volts. Here are some very common circuit schematics that are used to represent ground. To further illustrate this, let's say we have a voltage source here connected to some load all connected back to ground. So since this voltage V is directly connected to this point here, we can also say this point is V. So to calculate the voltage across this load, all we have to do is find the difference between this point and this point, but we already say this is ground, which is zero, so the voltage across the load is V minus zero equals V. So again, uh, current is the flow of positive electric charge. The units are called amperes or coulombs per second. A very common analogy of the voltage to current relationship is that using a stream of water. So let's say, for example, that I have a water faucet here. So the, let's say the knob to this faucet is the amount of voltage that I apply, V. So when I turn this, there would then be a stream of water that comes out of the faucet, which can be compared to current. So if I further increase this voltage even more, there will be more flow of water. In the same way, if you can increase the voltage in a circuit, thus the current will also increase. The unit for electric charge is the coulomb. The symbol for this is Q. In order to produce one coulomb of electric charge, we would need 6.241 times 10 to the 18th electrons. As we already stated, current is the amount of electrical charge flowing per second. We will revisit Coulombs when we study capacitors.
There are two different types of electric current, and each of them provides their own distinct advantages and disadvantages. The first of these, these two types of current is called direct current. It is defined as current that only flows in one direction, or in other words, it never becomes negative. Direct current is produced by sources like batteries, thermocouples, solar cells, etc. If you plan to build some circuits on your own at home, more than likely you will be building DC circuits. DC circuits are important because of their simplicity. They're most commonly used to charge batteries and to power electronic devices. The advantage of this is that it's pretty easy to make. This type of current can be generated by a number of sources very easily. The disadvantage of direct current is that it's not efficient at all to transmit over long distances. It results in a large amount of losses due to resistance. Because of this fact, the prominence of alternating current came about. Alternate or AC current is the flow of electrical charge that periodically reverses direction. AC waveforms usually come up in the shape of a sine wave. And AC signals are often generated using alternators, which create these AC signals by ro rotating magnet magnetic fields in power stations or other energy creating, energy generating stations. This is the same energy that comes into our schools and our homes that power our outlets and our lights and things of the sort. So again, the reason that AC current is so important is that it is significantly more easy to transmit the power over long distance than direct current. AC voltage can be easily transformed into higher or lower potentials with very little power loss. And then it can be converted back to DC very easily. AC, AC signals have many practical applications such as wireless transmission, power generation, motor control, and other very valuable applications.